Hello friends, this is part 3 uh, of, you know, solution of mathematical physics paper, paper C8 of 4th uh, semester, De Brugger University, Physics Honors, 2022. Uh, in part 2, we had solved up to 3E, but uh, I made a mistake uh, in calculation of uh, 3D. So we're going to start from 3D again. And 3E, question number 3, that was already solved in uh, uh, in an older video. That's why I have provided the I had provided the link only instead of solving in part two. So today we're gonna start uh, start with 3D again, and uh, I'm gonna explain what is the mistake uh, that uh, I made there, and uh, then I'm gonna explain it again. Okay. Then uh, link of this uh, link of the video where you're gonna get the solution of 3E that is given in the description description again and link of the description of part one and part two are also given in this uh, uh, in the description box okay link of those, those two parts part one and two so before we start let me tell you one more thing that uh, this is my insta id if you want to follow me then you can follow me right and please subscribe the channel if you are new to my channel also share with your friends inspire me to create new contents for you so now let's start so let's start with 3d uh, this uh, this one i had already solved in part two but i had later on i had cut that part because i made a mistake here so here you see uh, here is the correction so i had put uh, one by two to the power four it should be you know it should be 1 by 16 but I, there i had put uh, maybe a 1 by 4 that was the mistake okay so i'm going to show you how to solve uh, this uh, i'm going to explain it again okay so let's start this is question number 3d so let's evaluate this so here you see the given function is so given integral is this sine integration of sine to the power 6 z by z minus pi by 6 whole to the power 3 dz that's what we have right so here again equate the denominator uh, with uh, 0 right this is uh, of order 3 so z is equal to pi by 6 this is a pole of order 3 this is pole of order 3 and which is within the circle that's uh so here see here you see uh, within the circle c which is which is mod of z is equal to one right so here you see this is the imaginary axis sorry not imaginary this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis and this is the circle so let me draw the circle properly this is the circle and its radius is 1 and pi by 6 pi by 6 so here that's going to be 3.14 divided by 6 which is less than 1 so that must be uh, within this circle pi by 6 right so this this point is suppose pi by 6 let us suppose that way right so in that case what we can do here again we're gonna apply the cosy integral formula right so by cosy integral formula right now you see we will have for order m suppose z is equal to a is a pole of pole of order n in the circle c right then f of a that is factorial n by 2 pi i integration along the circle c f uh, here f of z by z minus a whole to the power 
whole to the power here you see if this is order of n then here we should have n and uh, here it should be n plus 1 uh, sorry n minus 1 so n minus 1 order derivative of f of a that means at z is equal to a that should be taken here this is it okay uh, then it should be n minus 1 factorial right or if you take this one as n plus 1 order order of n plus 1 then we can write this one as here n plus 1 then we can take this one as factorial n then we can take n order derivative of f of z at z is equal to a right so which gonna imply that integration of f of z along c uh, divided by z minus a whole to the power n plus 1 2 pi i then n order derivative of f at z is equal to a we can take that right so here uh, this sine 6 to the power sine to the power 6 z is taken as f of z right so here and here the order is 3 so we're gonna take n plus 1 is equal to 3 which implies that n is equal to 3 minus 1 and that means equal to 2 and f of z we're gonna take here sine to the power 6 z <clears throat> so as the order is 3 and we're going to take the second order derivative so let us define it let us obtain the second order derivative of f of z so let me copy this so let's obtain uh, second order derivative of f of z which is nothing but second order derivative with respect to z of this and which can be written this way right so if you differentiate this then what you're gonna have first you have to consider this one as z to the power 6 then if you differentiate it then what you're gonna get 6 z to the power 5 so we have taken instead of z to the power 5 we have sine z so that's why 6 sine to the power 5 z then as as we have assumed this one as z but it is in fact it is sine z so we have to differentiate again sine z and that's going to be cos z right that's going to be cos z so we have differentiated uh, with, uh, we have got the differentiation of uh, uh, we have got the first order differentiation of sine to the power 6 z so we have to differentiate it one more time right and now let us apply u into v rule product rule okay then constant term is taken outside first uh, first function sine to the power 5z second uh, derivative of second function cos z is minus sine z right then plus again the constant term then the second function then derivative of the first function again if you differentiate this first function sine to the power 5 then you're going to get 5 sine to the power 4z and if you differentiate again sine then you're going to get cos z so this cos z gives you into cos z cos z is square here and if you simplify this then what you're going to have 6 sine to the power 5 z and if you multiply this two that's that's going to be given that's going to be you know minus 6 sine to the power sine to the power 6 z then plus 6 cos square z cos square z 6 5 the 30 that should be 30 right so let me write it properly sine to the power 4 z now let's find f double s of a here a is nothing but so let me go back to the next uh, previous slide so here a is nothing but this pi by 6 so here pi by 6 is a z so let me write here z is equal to a is equal to pi by 6 in this case 
so here we're gonna put instead of a pi by 6 pi by 6 let's put pi by 6 minus 6 sine to the plus 6 here we're gonna have pi by 6 then plus 30 cos square of pi by 6 then sine to the power 4 of pi by 6 so if you evaluate this then what you're gonna have here minus 6 and sine pi by 6 is 1 by 2 and we have 2 to the power 6 then 30 cos pi by 6 is root 3 by 2 and we have cos square so here is square then again 1 by 2 whole to the power 4 that's what we're gonna have so if you evaluate this then what you're gonna have this is gonna be minus 6 into 1 by 64 uh, half to the power 6 is 1 by 64 then uh, plus 30 into root 3 square is 3 2 square is 4 right squaring this we have got 3 by 4 and squaring this we're gonna have 1 by 16 right 1 by 16 and uh, okay 3 and 2 times uh, it's gonna give you 32 okay so cancel it by 2 again it's gonna give you 15 cancel it by 2 it's gonna give you 2 right so in this case what we're gonna have here minus 3 minus 3 by 32 then plus 45 by 32 and taking LCM uh, we can have minus 3 plus 45 divided by 32 and it's gonna give you sorry 42 by 32 and cancelling this two again by 2 we're gonna have 21 by 16 that's what we're gonna have so now let me go back to the first slide uh, here this can be written as uh, this way also uh, why i'm writing this way i'm gonna tell you okay uh, first uh, let me go back to the first slide again so here you see uh, so i miss this one uh, here that should be n factorial now compare this one with this okay so if you compare integration of sine to the power 6 z by z minus pi by 6 whole to the power 3 dz and if you compare integration f of z this left hand side by z minus a whole to the power n plus 1 n plus 1 dz then you see fz is this sine to the power z uh, sine to the power 6 fz is equal to sine to the power 6 and n plus 1 is 3 that's why we have got n3 minus 1 is equal to 2 and so so that's why we should get integration uh, over c sine to the power 6 z uh, here z minus a value of a is here uh, pi by 6 pi by 6 whole to the power 3 is equal to uh, sorry here it should be dz is equal to 2 pi i by n factorial here the value of n is 2 right so 2 factorial into second order derivative of fz at at z is equal to pi by 6 that should be uh, obtained this should be the answer right so we have got this value second order derivative of f of z at pi by 6 this is the value we have got this is the second order derivative of f of z at uh, pi by 6 that should be pi by 6 actually right so that should be pi by 6 okay so now using this value what we're gonna have if you use this value here here you can see here if you put this value then what gonna be the answer let me write on the next uh, page okay then we should get just give me a second okay 
then we should get that integration over c sine to the power 6 z by z minus pi by 6 whole to the power 3 dz is equal to 2 pi i by 2 factorial second order derivative of f of z at z is equal to pi by 6 f at uh, sorry at z is equal to pi by 6 and this one its value we have got here you can see this 21 by 16 so let's put here 2 pi i factorial 2 is 2 2 into 1 actually 2 so we have got 21 by 16 and 2 to cancels here we have got 21 21 by 16 into 2 uh, into pi i that's what we have got right and uh, here you see yeah so here you see this question here this question is 3e okay so i have this is uh, i have done this one already in uh, one of the lectures uh, that i have made on complex number so link of this 3e also given in the description box okay that is also given in the de description box so you let's uh, solve question number four here you see so question number four i have already solved this three okay uh, in uh, lecture number four and five in lecture number four and five of integral transformation okay you can go to uh, the playlist uh, you can check the uh, check all the videos of uh, integral transformation so i have solved these three questions all these three questions in lex in lecture number four and five uh, those links are given in the description box i have written question number four question number four and links or just uh, maybe question number four. it is written this way in the description box question number four answer and then i have provided the link of the video of the lectures of uh, you know lectures four and five okay so you can get this so now let us solve question number four okay so let me take a new slide and let me write this question first one uh, we need to find laplace transformation of this okay so let's go to the new slide here you see and we are to find the laplace transformation okay question number five one solution we need to find a laplace transformation of uh, what is the question t to the power 2 that means t square e to the power t sine t sine 40 so we had t square e to e to the power t right e to the power t and sine 40 this is the question we need uh, its laplace transformation so what are the formula we we're going to use here now you see uh, here we're going to use this formula that uh, laplace if the laplace transformation of f of t is capital f of s then we know that uh, laplace transformation of t to the power n into small f of t is given by minus 1 whole to the power n and nth order derivative with respect to s of f of s this one right if the last laplace transformation of f of t is f of s so we're gonna use that and we also we're gonna also use this e to the power at f of t its laplace transformation is given by if uh, you know laplace transformation of f of t is f of s then laplace transformation of e to the power at where a is a constant into f of t is given by f of s minus a we're going to use this too so first here you see we're going to consider this one as f of t so if that is the case laplace transformation of that means uh, let me obtain the laplace transformation of e to the power t sine 4t using this formula using this formula and here we're going to consider f of t as sine 4t 
so in order to obtain that uh, so here it gonna be uh, you know so if we take this is as f of t then we're gonna take uh, we're gonna let's find a sign uh, you know laplace transformation of sine 40 okay we know that laplace transformation of sine a t is given by a by s square plus a square so that's why here we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get 4 by s square plus 4 square which is gonna be equal to 4 by s square plus 16 so we're gonna take this one as f of s right we're gonna take this one as f of s uh, let me take this one as capital f1 of s if that is the case and uh, if that is the case and let me take this one as uh, just wait let me take this one as laplace transformation small f1 of t so let me take this one as f1 t right so let me take it that way in that case you know this can be written sorry it's a sweet uh, let me write this one first no and let me take this one as laplace transformation of e to the power a t f1 of t right that is equal to laplace transformation of sine 40 so here f1 t is taken as sine 40 so we have uh, we have taken that sine 40 as small f1 of t you can take that way as well or you can find directly also without considering this f1 and f2 so so this is going to be equal to according to this formula according to this formula so here you see if you compare this two then here a must be equal to one right so a is equal to one so that's why we're gonna have f1 of s minus 1 and here f of 1 is this f1 of s is this so that's going to be equal to that's going to be equal to here 4 minus s minus 1 whole square plus 16 right if you simplify this if you simplify this that's going to be equal to s square minus 2s plus 1 plus 16 that means you can write directly this is s 17 right you're going to get this one so now let me take this one as capital f2 s and let us take that small f2 of t is equal to suppose e to the power t sine 40 so that so that we can see that laplace transformation of uh, t square t square t square uh, small f2 of t that is is equal to according to this formula according to this formula minus 1 whole to the power 2 because here instead of n we have 2 here second order derivative with respect to s of f2 of s here we have taken small f2 so this is taken small a uh, capital a f uh, f2 of s so here because laplace transformation of this laplace transformation of this is this one right so here we have applied this identity if the laplace transformation of a small f of t is capital f of s then laplace transformation of t to the power n small f of t is equal to this so applying this we have got this result so hope you have understood this so now here you see so we need to find the derivative so laplace transformation of laplace transformation of 
t square is simply t square f2 of t is nothing but e to the power t sine 4t this is the f2 of t right so hope you have understood this so this is equal to this is equal to minus 1 square is simply 1 second order derivative second order derivative of f2 of s that means here in this case this one 4 by s square minus 2 s plus 17 and let it be equation number 1 now let's find the derivative and uh, let me copy this here it can be written this way dds of dds of 4 by s square plus twice s sorry that should be minus minus twice s plus 17 right we can write this way that way so first uh, let us uh, differentiate this uh, applying u by v rule its derivative is given by denominator derivative of numerator minus numerator derivative of denominator by denominator square if we apply that so first uh, let me obtain dds of 4 by s square minus twice s plus 17 its derivative will be uh, if you apply this then v is your s square minus 2s plus 17 and derivative of u dds of 4 that's going to be 0 because 4 is constant so that's why we can write just with we can write 0 minus 0 minus then u derivative of v v is this the, that's uh, its derivative uh, gonna be you know twice s minus if you differentiate this that's gonna be minus uh, 2 right so that's what we're gonna have by v square that is s minus 2s plus 17 s square minus 2s plus 17 whole square that's what we're gonna have so it's gonna be equal to if you take minus 2 common uh, then what you're gonna have just take two common then it's gonna be minus 8 by s minus 1 that's what uh, into s minus 1 that's uh, divided by s square minus 2s plus 17 whole square that's what we're gonna have now if you differentiate it again if you differentiate it again using the same formula so we have got this is equal to this one so if you differentiate it dds of this one then what you can have if you apply the same result same uh, rule so let me differentiate it now so again v that is s square minus 2s plus 17 then derivative of u if you differentiate this that's going to be minus 8 right minus 8 then minus then u u is nothing but minus 8 into s minus 1 and derivative of v v is this one so if you differentiate this then that should be 2 into s square minus 2s plus 17 then again it is function of function so if you differentiate the inner part which is uh, within the bracket then you should get 2s minus 2 that's what you will have right so now and denominator is square that is s minus 2s plus 17 that's going to be whole to the power 4 because there is already a square again if you square it's going to be 4 so now you see what we can do here we can take minus 8 common from here and here both and also we can take common this one as well right and uh, it's supposed to be square because there was a square right and this should uh, this must be square okay so on taking this common so minus 8 into s square minus 2s plus 17 is taken common 
so within bracket we're gonna have s square minus twice s plus 17 then minus this minus 8 is taken common right so we're gonna have s minus 1 and this part is taken common right so we're gonna have 2 and if you take 2 common from here right then it's gonna be 4 2 to the 4 then s minus 1 this is s minus 1 s minus 1 so we can write 4 s minus 1 whole square so 4 into s minus 1 whole square that's what we can write divided by s square minus twice s plus 17 whole to the power 4 so in order to simplify this just square this one then what we're gonna have 4 into s is s minus 1 whole square that's gonna be s square minus twice s plus 1 and and so it's gonna be 4s square minus 8s plus 4 so let's replace this one replace this one by this then what you're gonna have you're gonna get this one here and as there is minus so sign within it uh, within the bracket that's gonna be change okay so we had got 4s square minus 8s plus 4 this sign becomes positive now this becomes negative now as there is a minus sign here okay so hope you have understood this now if you simplify this what you're gonna have minus 4s square and s square that's gonna give you minus 3s square right so subtracting these two we have got minus 3s square just with minus 3s square minus 3s square then 8 minus 8s minus 2s that's going to be uh, 6s right that's going to be 6s and 17 minus 4 that's going to be 13 that's what we have got right so hope you have understood this so now you see you can cancel this one by this here you're gonna have cube now right so then what we're gonna have here i uh, just let me write it here so now we're gonna have so this minus sign if you multiply this minus sign here then it's gonna be 8 into 3s square minus 6s minus 13 divided by cancelling this one this is gonna be cube so we're gonna write s square minus 2s plus 17 plus 17 oh, sorry this is supposed to be 4 this should be 4 okay now you see let us use this uh, this is the second order derivative of this one this is the value of this part so if we put this uh, result let me go back to the last slide if we put this result uh, here in one so then we're gonna get the laplace transformation of this right so let me take a new slide here so here you see we have got the second order derivative of this is equal to this one and according to the formula laplace transformation of this is equal to here minus one whole square second order derivative of this minus but second you know minus one square is uh, simply plus one that's why we can write this one uh, simply simply we can uh, write this one right and uh, the value of this part we have got this one so putting this we have got the result this is the laplace transformation of this so now let's move on to 5 2 so here is the equation 5 2 e to the power a t is cos omega t e to the power a t cos omega t so we are to find the laplace transformation of this so it's very simple so let me show you here you see 5 2 solution so we need the laplace transformation of e to the power a t cos omega t cos omega t right so here we're gonna apply this uh, identity uh, that if if laplace transformation of small f of t is equal to capital f of s then laplace transformation of e to the power a t 
f of t is given by f of s minus a right we're going to use this so here here f of t should be taken as cos omega t cos omega t and laplace transformation of cos a t is given by s square by sorry not s square s s by s square a square but instead of a we have omega here so it's going to be omega square so that's why what we have got that laplace transformation of f of t which is the capital f of s for us is equal to laplace transformation of cos omega t which is going to be equal to s s divided by s square plus omega square that is what we have got this is the f of s therefore laplace transformation of e to the power a t f of t which is equal to capital f of s minus a in this case laplace transformation of e to the power a t f of t is cos omega t that's going to be equal to capital f of uh, s minus a here uh, you see f of s is nothing but this one s by s square plus omega square but we need f of s minus 1 so it must be s minus 1 and this must be s minus 1 whole square right hope this thing is clear to you so this is the result we should get if you want to expand this then you can expand as well right so if you want to expand then it gonna be s minus a so s square minus 2 a s plus a square plus omega square that's what you're gonna have so that's it right so now let's move on to the last one last one uh, you know uh, laplace transformation of t to the power n that is simply n factorial divided by s to the power n plus one so as we have uh, three marks so we have to show this one using the definition let me show you uh, let me go to a new slide so here you see uh, five three solution we need to find the laplace transformation of t to the power n which is uh, nothing but uh, factorial n by s to the power n plus one let me show you how so by definition by definition of laplace transformation we're gonna have laplace transformation of t to the power n that's going to be integration from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus s t then f of t that is t to the power n here in this case dt so let us put let s t is equal to suppose x and in that case t going to be equal to x by s and if you differentiate both sides with respect to t then s dx by dt and who is going to be equal to uh, uh, who is going to imply that dt is equal to dx by s right we're going to get this one let me write it properly dx dx by s so using this so this turn out to be e to the power minus x now because we have taken this one as x right instead of t we're going to get this s minus x sorry uh, yes s by x x by s whole to the power n then dt is replaced by this dx by s so uh, this is nothing but uh, nothing but x to the power n by s to the power n so into 1 by s dx you can consider this way right so product of this one and this can be written this way as well x uh, 1 x to the power 1 x to the power n into 1 by s to the power n if you multiply this one and this one that's going to be 1 by s to the power n plus 1 so which is a uh, which can be taken outside the integral as a constant part so that's going to be 1 by 
n plus 1 because we are defined integrating with respect to x so s is taken out so integration from you know 0 to infinity then e to the power minus x then this x to the power n can be written as x to the power n can be written as n plus 1 minus 1 dx and by the definition of gamma function by the definition of gamma function gamma of n is defined as you know integration from 0 to infinity e to the power minus x x to the power n minus 1 dx that is the definition of gamma function so here you see this is the definition of gamma function so that's why if you put n plus 1 so it gonna be 0 to infinity integration e to the power minus x x to the power n plus 1 minus 1 dx that's what we're gonna have so therefore 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 and one more thing just let me write this one t to the power n that's going to be equal to 1 by s to the power n plus 1 so this part can be replaced by gamma of n plus 1 n plus 1 and we know that uh, since gamma of n plus 1 is factorial n so that's why this result can be written as factorial n divided by s to the power n plus 1 so this is the result so hope you have understood this and the last question question number six that's going to be solved in the next part part four okay thank you for watching and see you in the next video